afternoon. Uh, we ended up with about two hundred and two these times. I mean, it was no. Cool. But the advances in the treatment of HIV has actually brought about a revolutionary change. Then, then life goes on for 20 years, maybe even 25 years. An average almost 14 years once you are diagnosed HIV before you develop complications. So, people with HIV today are equivalent to people who have diabetes or heart disease. So, they are going to live much longer life. And that's a very, very important thing change that came about in, in, in the medical management of HIV, it's more of a chronic disease. So we are going to have a lot of HIV people sitting in our communities, all treatment doing very well, these are industries. Will they get infections? Will they get cancer? Will they go in transplantations to a greater extent? Will they go to AIDS with worsening of the disease? Can they die much quicker? So what happens? Uh, Month to show that certain medications increase the levels of some of the other medications, so that again makes it very complex. We need to make uh, measure the levels of these medications on a very regular basis. So, in conclusion, I wouldn't go too long. It's just to say that our experience in HIV patients should be considered no different than any than any other patient. In our experience, HIV transplantation in HIV patients should be no different from patients who have uh, transplantation otherwise than the non-HIV patients. And just consider them as patients who have a slightly increased risk. And that is what our experience showed. Reluctance to transplant patients with HIV is no longer as fun as like a whole team of us. Here you have Dr. Ashley, who is the director. Uh, we have Prashant, who is here on the diet, uh, who is the lab donor uh, person, and the transplant urologist, Dr. Sanjay Rao, who is again on the diet, uh, and, uh, and also uh, Dr. Isia Kamal, my colleague. And then the anesthesia people, Dr. Nanda Subramanian, again the transplant surgeon, and the whole team that we got with looking after that. So this was our first two, two, two minutes. And it's not with, uh, without complications. Uh, it's also expected uh, the similar type of complications in uh, open patients. But recipient of transplantation is like uh, coordinated teamwork and better planning for which type of the surgery and case selection and experience and without instruments we can't handle this. In conclusion, it is a less invasive, less morbidity for the donor and uh, mainly it maintains the high quality of allogram and the technically kidney that we are going to take. Out. We have a large viral load as well. So both these issues have to be taken care of before we actually transplant them. So we actually uh, Treat them with uh, antiretroviral medications, the heart medications are available. Make sure that the viral load is undetectable. So it's actually much safer than doing transplantation in hepatitis B, which is extremely uh, infective, or hepatitis C. Uh, it is far safer than hepatitis B and C, remember that. So that's a very interesting... Uh, These immunosuppressive medications also inhibit the multiplication of the virus. So the old fears are no longer the whole through. And that is a big difference. Uh, that is the big difference that actually uh, uh, we brought about. The rest of the function of the subsidiary genoma is the rest of the two people of the Since 2004, if you have a number of people, you can have a number of people. Actually, some time is expected to be because. Il faut que ton CD4 atteigne une valeur avant de commencer le traitement. Oui, comme le docteur a dit à nous, il y a une question. Ici, pour une investigation, un certain niveau de camp doit être réussi avant le traitement. Il a dit à nous, peut-être que six mois avant, and then we said, we told him to come down. He said, we can do it because uh, I've had experience of this before in abroad. I was trained outside. And at the same time, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of literature available. Uh, so we said, uh, we told him to come down. He came down and uh, then we first checked his HIV status, um, got that under control, uh, uh, vaccinated him against various infections that he could get, uh, started him on... Uh, the transfer medications, uh, continue the dialysis, the religious medications, got also the HIV specialist to look at him a number of times. 
and uh, his mother was worked up as a donor and um, over it took a lot of preparation at least about uh, three to four months and then we did the transplant doing the transplant and managing the post transplant was not that difficult we had uh, a very good hold on the medications check the levels regularly and um, and uh, he did very well post transplant we had actually no complications at all so that was a very big thing and uh, you can see him now viral load jo hai virus ka load yeah that has to be actually brought to less than 50000 less than 50000 so so basically the viral load is suppressed completely almost undetectable levels only huh? and uh, the cd4 cells uh, which is the immune cells have to come up uh, so we prefer it at least more than 200 which is the international recommendation they had a level of about 360 one had 360 and the other one had about 320 and two of them that was he had about 360 they will come down after transplant but it like and climb up it will come down a bit after transplant it is down a little bit after transplant but it will pick up